Hello, welcome to the Thursday, February 21st, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Google today released details of a problem that Microsoft fixed in Microsoft Edge with its February update. The problem here is it wasn't really a bug or a vulnerability as more an intentional weakness that was introduced to allow certain websites to run Flash. Most web browsers have for a while now introduced a concept where in order to run Flash on a website, you first have to give that site permission by typically clicking on the applet before it runs. Now, this particular whitelist allows about 58 different websites to run Flash without asking for permission first. To make things somewhat more tricky, uh, the list was actually not in clear text. It was a list of SHA-256 hashes. Now, given that most of them were well-known websites, uh, brute forcing it was relatively trivial, but a lot of sites that are listed here, I had no idea uh, what they actually are. So you may be a little bit uh, curious about why Microsoft allowed these sites to actually run Flash without asking for permission. Another sort of interesting part to this is that, yes, uh, Microsoft modified this whitelist. They didn't eliminate it. The only entry that's left now is Facebook. So uh, Facebook is still allowed to run Flash without user permission. If the user uses Microsoft Edge, the other thing they sort of fixed, but given it's only two entries, not really all that meaningful, but the old whitelist didn't actually even verify whether they used HTTPS or HTTP. So anybody who would spoof any of these 58 different whitelisted sites would be able to run Flash. Well, uh, now Facebook has to come via HTTPS. Of course, Facebook is only HTTPS. Google also pointed out that some of the whitelisted domains suffer from known cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. So that could also be used to inject code no matter whether HTTP or HTTPS is used. Now you may remember, I think last week I talked about how some iOS apps were found to take screen recordings as you were using them and sending them back to a company that was then looking for usability issues with these particular applications. And of course, these screen recordings often contained personal information. Similar case, but a little bit worse in some ways, Qingdong Financial, a Chinese bank, was found out to actually store screenshots taken while the app was running, even if the app wasn't in the foreground. So you start the app, you put in the background, you start some other app, then you take a screenshot. Well, that screenshot ends up in this Qingdong Finance app. And again, of course, this may include personal information, in particular information from competing banking apps. Now, Qingdong Financial published a statement regarding this and the intent here was to allow their users to easier report bugs because often if a user does report a bug, they take a screenshot uh, before they then submit the screenshot to the company. But of course, they didn't really check if their application was actually the subject of the screenshot. And security evaluation company ISE took a closer look at password managers. We all hopefully use password managers, can't really do without them anymore. But of course, the idea of having all your passwords in one basket is always somewhat scary. So they took a closer look at these password managers to see how well they actually dealt with this problem. Now, all of these password managers did use appropriate hashing algorithms in order to protect the passphrase. Their weaknesses showed up is how memory was scrubbed in these password managers after passwords were decrypted or after the passphrase was decrypted. And that's, of course, a somewhat tricky 
issue. Now, some of them did overwrite the passphrase after it was used, but didn't do so in all the possible spots where it ended up as it was copied to different locations during the decryption process. On the other hand, one has to also understand some a little bit a limitation to these password managers. If someone is able to read memory on your system, they should also be able to read keystrokes. So once you have a keystroke logger on your system, then password managers really don't have a defense left at that point. The brief report published by ISE doesn't make any mention of vendor notifications or patches being available. Wouldn't rate the issue too highly, but if you do see patches coming down the line, yes, probably a good idea to apply them given the importance of these password managers. Well, and that's it for today on Thursday. Today, probably when you're listening to this, I'll be actually speaking at the IC Square meeting here in Jacksonville about, well, some of the phishing resistant sort of methods for authentication. So talking a little bit about passwords here. That's it. And thanks again for listening. Bye.